And it's my great pleasure as chairman of the today's session to introduce the first speaker. It's uh, our dear friend and colleague, Jeremy. I suppose calling from home. Exactly. Uh, and <laughs> I remind everybody that there will be an intermission between the first talk by Jeremy and the second one by Uriel. And that intermission will begin at quarter past three central European time, meaning French time and Swedish time, and translated to whatever time for everybody else. Jeremy, please go ahead. Ah, one more thing. Jeremy said that he accepts questions during the talk. So they can be questions at any time. It's not that I accept, I encourage questions, please, because it's already hard to, to uh to be uh, giving this talk without seeing your reactions. So I hope that, yes. uh, that, so that uh, so we make so things so anybody easier. Anybody who wants to ask a question to, uh, to Jeremy, just unmute yourself and then ask the question. And that's how we'll do may it I suggest question? May I suggest questions, but not discussion. Otherwise we will get yes. nowhere. No, no uh, I think I know what you refer to. I will interrupt any long discussions. But questions are allowed. Please, Jeremy. So thank you, thank you, Eric, and thanks uh, uh, the three, the trio of organizers for uh, keeping on this uh, this meeting, uh, given the circumstances. So I think it's it's a good idea that that we can uh, still do something. Of course, we will miss the the informal parts. I mean, all the all the, the informal discussions that we were expecting to have in, in Bangalore. But still, uh, I, I hope that that uh, that we will be able to share some things. So I, I, I will try to talk about uh, uh, some uh, recent uh, measurements done in, in numerical simulations about uh, the interlink between uh, dissipations and the Lagrangian statistics of dissipations and uh, uh, time irreversibility of the relative motion between the, the flow tracers. So, so uh, uh, of course, I'm talking about 3D uh, incompressible turbulence. So, so uh, basically, uh, uh, the, the, the long-term goal of, of uh, what I will be talking about is to try to, to have a better handling on the relationship between uh, developed turbulent solutions of, of, of uh, uh, coming from uh, uh, Navier-Stokes equations taken in the limit when viscosity is going to zero, or redness number to infinity, and uh, uh, singular solutions of, of the Euler equation where uh, one is, is looking at what's happening when, uh, by taking abruptly the, the viscosity to zero and, and try to construct in a given way some, some uh, turbulent-like uh, solutions. So, so uh, I mean, clearly, I mean, if, if one is doing some uh, stupid measurements as, as what is shown here in, in this, uh, on, on the figure, by looking at the scale by scale energy budget, it's, it is clear that the, the, the viscous terms, which are shown here in red, don't play much role when we move uh, far from the dissipative range. Uh, and actually, when, when we are starting uh, to be above uh, what is the so-called Taylor microscale. And, and, and the question is how uh, uh, the, the, this uh, clear indication in the scale by scale energy budget uh, trans, I mean, uh, translates to, uh, to, uh, to actual uh, inertial range turbulence. So you see, you see in the inertial range, I mean, you have exactly the nonlinear transfer terms and the, the forcing, which are, which are uh, equate, equating themselves. I mean, they, 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 uh, they are exactly uh, uh, the two dominant terms. And, and so uh, basically this is uh, well known from the scale by scale energy budget and, and from uh, uh, considerations which are made, uh, uh, for instance, by, by when, when you try to derive some uh, uh, inertial range statistics, uh, by when you neglect uh, viscous diffusion, you, you know that you can uh, get some good answers on what's happening, like for instance, when you try to derive the Forfi flow. And so, uh, so uh, uh, the, on, the, 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 other thing, the other thing that we know is that uh, people are using a lot of uh, so-called large eddy simulations where they filter the smallest case of, of turbulence. And, and from that, they know that uh, the only thing which are important are the fluxes and not the, the specific uh, mechanism that you put in order to absorb them at small scales. And, and so uh, uh, this is basically the, the, the motivation of, of what I will be talking about. So uh, 
uh, the, the main thing that uh, is, is, uh, is well documented in, in turbulence is uh, uh, what is the so-called turbulent dissipative anomaly, which is the, the persistence of a finite uh, dissipation, viscous dissipation rate in the limit when uh, uh, the Reynolds number is going to zero by fixing, so I'm sorry for the, the zigzag in the, in, the, in, the, in the letters. So when fixing both the injection rate of, of kinetic energy and the, the, the large scale, so you make viscosity to zero by somehow keeping uh, uh, these two quantity constants, so which, which is equivalent to take Reynolds to, to, uh, to, uh, to uh, infinity. And what is well known, and, and, and these are different measurements uh, which show this thing, is that when you increase, uh, decrease viscosity or increase Reynolds number, uh, basically your dissipation is going to, to a plateau and, and, and uh, is not vanishing. And this is due to uh, uh, an increase of, of the number of singular structure that, that you have in the flow and, and which make the gradient diverge like uh, one over square root of the viscosity. So, so clearly uh, the, the, the persistence of this uh, uh, finite dissipation of kinetic energy is telling us that that uh, uh, the the Euler equation is is not the 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 the, the, the actual Euler equation that we think about, but it's more uh, uh, a singular uh, way to 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 interpret the solutions to the Euler equation, uh, which may take into account uh, these uh, these uh, small scale structures which are developing. So it's uh, usually we, we we use the weak solutions, but which is also breaking the time reversibility of the, the smooth solution to the Euler equation in a very specific manner. Okay. So uh, uh, some things are known about the way uh, one can break this, this, uh, this uh, time reversibility and uh, impose a, a finite dissipation of kinetic energy. And this is well known since the, the work of Onsager. And, and uh, no, not well known since the work of Onsager. It was well known by Onsager, but maybe uh, uh, exploited uh, much later, uh, starting from, from the, the, maybe the, the 90s. Uh, but maybe it was also known by Komogorov uh, in, in due time, certainly, that, that uh, this was true. So basically, uh, uh, onsager criterion is telling us that the, the, the singularity that we have uh, that are developing in this uh, 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 inviscid fields have a very specific uh, 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 structure and, and they have to have, in particular, a Holder exponent. So, I mean, basically, an exponent which is telling you how uh, differences are scaling as a function of the separation between two points, which another exponent which should be less than one third. So, one third being the, the ultimate value for which you have a finite dissipation. And any uh, solution with a higher Holder exponent will not dissipate. But the, the thing is that uh, it's well known since uh, uh, recent work by uh, mathematicians on constructing a weak dissipative solution or weak uh, uh, solutions to the other equations that are not conserving energy, that uh, this uh, requirements on harder exponents uh, or, or, or on the dissipating energy is not enough to construct unique solutions. And, and that uh, there should be uh, other criteria, certainly, uh, in order to, 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 uh, to enforce uh, the physical admissibility of, of these uh, weak solutions. And so what, what I want to, to, uh, to, uh, to, to, to focus on is uh, the associated uh, tracer uh, trajectories, so the, the Lagrangian motions, which is associated to that, which uh, because of, of this, uh, 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 singularities which are which are present in in the in the in the velocity field uh, will display uh, uh, a non uniqueness also uh, flow a non unique flow and uh, simply because uh, if you look at so the tracer trajectories are, are just uh, uh, characteristics of, of the velocity field which are uh, solution to this uh, differential equation and and which is telling you what is the position at time t of uh, 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 a free element which was initially at a, at a given position x naught, okay, and and because of 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 the fact that uh, the uh, Holder exponent is less than one, I mean this flow is non-Lipschitz, so that uh, solutions are non-unique, okay, and so and so uh, 
uh, you see that, that there is a clear a clear way to to uh, to uh, to uh, I mean a clear consequence of uh, energy dissipation in the non-uniqueness of of this Lagrangian flow, and uh, and uh, this uh, non-uniqueness ha has been uh, exploited a lot in order to understand the statistics of passive scalars, and, and this was uh, uh, in the late 90s or early uh, 2000s, and uh, and uh, in particular. Uh, it explains why uh, there is anomalous dissipation of uh, a passive scalar uh, transported by uh, uh, an intermediate flow. But this was mainly uh, seen as uh, in, a, in a passive manner rather than uh, in the actual uh, reformulation of free dynamics in terms of, of uh, uh, Lagrangian viewpoints. And so the, the, the question I, I want to address is whether or not, so I have no answer, but, but it's, a, it's a part of, I, I, I would like to contribute to, to, to give some, uh, some ideas on this question, is can uh, Lagrangian statistics, so stemming from the study of, of the solutions to these uh, differential equations, uh, provide uh, uh, some addi additional insights on the physical admissibility of, of, the, of the weak solutions to the other equation. Okay. So I'm mainly using uh, direct numerical simulations, so which are uh, obtained from the, the, the MPI uh, spectral code, which is called the LATU, like Lagrangian turbulence, and which was uh, developed by uh, Holger Hohmann uh, some times ago. And, and uh, most of my simulations will rely on, on, uh, on, uh, on, uh, on these, uh, these parameters. So basically we have uh, run a, a simulation with a 4096 cube uh, collocation points for which we have a Reynolds number, a Taylor scale Reynolds number, which is of the order of 700. And inside this, this, uh, this flow, we have put 1 billion tracer trajectories that we are integrating at the same time as the flow. And so this is typically uh, a snapshot of, of uh, so the local dissipation, so which is nothing but the, the norm of the symmetric part of the gradient. And and uh, in, and this is a snapshot in a slice of of uh, of, uh, of one grid point, so of uh, of uh, almost uh, one uh, one. Uh, so it's an average over one uh, uh, Kolmogorov scale. And and what you see is that so this is you have a, this is the full domain. So it's a, a triply periodic. So it's a two pi by two pi. And and this is typically the scale at which we inject energy. Okay. And if you zoom, zoom, zoom inside the flow, you will see uh, structures which are which are assembled, which looks like uh, 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 related to to uh, vortex filaments. And typically, the Kolmogorov scale is of the order of the the separation between these two arrows. Okay, so it's very small. And and uh, and so what you see is that uh, things are not completely. Uh, uh, Simple to describe. So you have you have correlations which are spanning the full scales, and this is typically uh, the, the the classical ways uh, things are in turbulent flows. Okay. And, and 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 so clearly you see that 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 you have uh, dissipation is not uniformly distributed. That you have strong fluctuation of dissipation, and 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 you have regions which are dissipating a lot, and others which are dissipating much less, and 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 the sizes of of these regions. Is, uh, is spanning the full scales, so up to the, the, the smaller scale of the flow. So uh, this resolution is is uh, is uh, is uh, certainly uh, the minimum one you need in order to start to see clear deviations in uh, in numerics to to uh, to uh, to K forty one scaling. So here, here what I show here is the, just the second order Eulerian structure function. So it's the increments of of uh, squared increments of uh, of the velocity over a distance r as a function of r, and, and what you see is, is that so you have a scaling range here, which is somewhere between uh, uh, I don't know 20, uh, 30 times the Kolmogorov scale and uh, maybe uh, one half or, or, or one quarter of, of the large scales, and 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 on this uh, inertial range, I mean you start to see that the slope is different from the prediction from Kolmogorov, okay, which will be. Uh, Going back after the 230. Okay, so so far uh, so good. Uh, so let me continue. Uh, so so uh, uh, now 
what, what, what I, I show here is just to get, again, another qualitative insight on, on this flow. What I show is, is the, the, uh, that by eye, we observe very strong correlation between uh, the local value of the dissipation and the mixing properties of the flow. So what is shown on the left hand side is again uh, the local, I mean the, the local value of the kinetic energy dissipation in a slice, and on the right hand side uh, you see uh, in the same slice at the same time the distance which has been traveled by tracers. Okay, so it's the if you want you take as a function of the final uh, 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 position of, of of the tracer you look. Uh, how much they have traveled uh, before uh, coming to this point. So, and, and the, 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 the lighter is the color, the larger is the distance they have traveled. And this for a time, which is of the order of the larger detail of a time. Okay. Can and I so what you see, you? yes, please. Your definition of uh, epsilon lock is uh, this like Euclidean norm uh, at some points at some uh, subdomain. So, so it's the, what I define as local dissipation. So it's, this is the usual way when uh, people are defining it in, in physics. So I know that mathematicians are defining it differently from time to time. So it's it's the the so this this is based based on on the on the strain tensor on Stokes uh, on the on Stokes strain strain tensor, and basically it's so it's the it's the norm of it's the local norm. I mean the, the something which depends on on uh, on space of the gradient, of the symmetric part of the gradient. So it's the Euclidean norm of the, of the, of the, of the, of the matrix. So it's the, the sum, sum of the squared yeah. components. I just want to know what do you mean by this norm? Thank you. Ah, yes, it's sum of the squared components. Okay, very good, thank you. I mean, uh, so the norm squared is the sum of the squared components. Okay, so, yeah. and, and, and so um, if we zoom, So if we zoom uh, 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 on the smaller scale, we clearly see that, 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 uh, that there is a, a visible correlation between uh, highly dissipative regions of the flow, okay? And places which correspond to almost a discontinuity in the Lagrangian map. So in the backward Lagrangian map. In places where you have uh, things which are uh, coming from far apart, which are mixing together. Okay, so you see that, that you have discontinuities here and in the neighborhood, you have a, a strong dissipation event. And, and then you have regions which are, which are almost all coming from the same place. And in this case, you have almost no uh, uh, dissipation. So no, almost no turbulent activity. Okay, so, so, uh, uh, so the, the, the object that, that I'm considering is, is this, uh, uh, local uh, earlier, so, uh, dissipation, so, so uh, uh, that I have defined and, and shown already, and and uh, and in order to to uh, to do some uh, uh, turbulence statistics, one is usually uh, using a coarse graining version of, of this uh, this quantity, which is obtained by averaging this uh, local dissipation over balls of uh, radius L, and L being uh, now the 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 the, the, the coarse graining scale. And so uh, uh, this object is, has been uh, at the center of many studies, I mean, including uh, the construction of, of uh, uh, the Komarov refined safe similarity uh, hypothesis, uh, the, the, the construction of multifractal uh, uh, statistics and multifractal models to, 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 of, of, uh, of uh, multiplicative cascades, etc. And so, and so basically. Uh, uh, what is shown on, on this figure is the is the um, is the, the distribution uh, the probability distribution function the probability density function of the the, the logarithm of this uh, of this uh, uh, local dissipation I mean the coarse grain dissipation for different values of the coarse graining scale spanning the in, the, the inertial range and uh, as as you see so it's shown you see in a semi logarithmic. So that basically a parabola like that will correspond exactly to a, a, a Gaussian distribution of the log, so to a log normal distribution of, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the dissipation. And so we are not exactly log normal, but we are not very close. We are very close to log normal. 
And so, so you see you have small deviations uh, on, the, on the left and on the right tails, uh, which are tilting a bit the, 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 the Gaussian and, and which make things uh, a bit non-log uh, normal. But uh, if one is interested in, in uh, rather uh, low order statistics, so here it's up to, uh, to, uh, to order uh, P in the structure functions, what you see is that at the end, uh, the, the, the difference between uh, a log normal approximation to these curves and the exponents you get uh, from, from uh, uh, experiments, which are shown here as symbols, uh, are very little. I mean, so the, basically, the, it's, it's pretty uh, uh, a good approximation to say that, that, that the, the, the things can be approximated by a log normal distribution. So, so, uh, uh, so, so things are, are, seems to be pretty clear. I mean, we have uh, a, a good representation of the dissipation, a link to, to, uh, to, uh, to uh, velocity statistics, to the, the, the intermittent exponents. But uh, this is true when we look at things in, an, in this Eulerian description. So in, in a Lagrangian frame, things are much more uh, uh, complicated and, and, uh, and in particular, uh, uh, one observes that, that there are very long uh, uh, correlations of, 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 the dissipative, uh, of the dissipation along tracer trajectories. So here I, I show you just, just for, for, the, for, for uh, have, getting a, a representative idea. So it's the dissipation measured, so lo the local dissipation measured, so normalized to, to, to the mean one, uh, measured a longer tracer trajectory as a function of time over uh, basically hundreds of, of, of the Comorgo of times and, and, uh, and you see maybe four or five times the, the large scale. And what you see is that, I mean, it's hard Jeremy, to find. Jeremy, yes. I just have, it's Beranger. I have a question. Yes. Uh, epsilon, yes, is it the Eulerian epsilon that uh, you interpolate at the location of the tracer, or is it uh, the la exactly. Lagrangian, which is uh, acceleration times velocity? No, no, it's 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 the it's the the, the Eulerian one. But okay. they, 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 I mean, supposedly they are the same. Huh? Uh, no. No, no, the there, is a pressure, there is a pressure term. Uh, no, they're not the same. No, they're not the same. You're right. They're not the same because you have the... the uh, you have the you pressure have the, contribution. The, the work, yes, you have pressure the work of pressure. You the acceleration yeah. into that. Uh, so so it's, it's, it's the viscous dissipation. Okay. So it's this object, exactly. But computed along tracer trajectories. Okay, that's clear. So, so, uh, so what, what you do see is that, is that uh, uh, things are, 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 are very intermittent. So it's hard to, to find uh, uh, something more intermittent in turbulence. And, 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 and you see that you have bursts uh, uh, which are very uh, localized in time uh, where, where, where the, the, the typical values of the dissipations are tens of times uh, larger than the average. And you have other regions which are, I mean, other uh, times, I mean, time interval durations, which are very calm, where, 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 where you have almost no uh, turbulent activity. And, and, and this uh, translates in the, when you measure the autocorrelation of the dissipation. So if you measure the time autocorrelation of the dissipation along, uh, uh, along uh, 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 tracer trajectories, so what you see is that you have very long uh, correlations and things are decreasing very slowly, not much slower than, than what you would expect from a, a, a very hand wavy uh, interpretation of turbulence where you say ah, things should be correlated only over, so, so uh, dissipation being a small scale quantity, it should be correlated only over uh, uh, times of the order of the Komarov time. So what you see is that when you, when you go far in the, in the, in the inertial range, so the, uh, tens up to hundreds of times uh, the 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 of time scale. What you see is that you are developing uh, 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 um, uh, not a, a correlation which seems to decrease like a power law. And and so and and the, and the exponent is 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 uh, is also strange because 
the exponent is very close to minus one, which means that it seems that we are very close to the, the, the edge between having uh, long range or short range uh, uh, correlations. So slope minus one, it will mean that the, the, the integral uh, time scale will be infinite because things will not be integrable. But of course, if we go far enough, larger than, than the, the large scale, then we have an exponential drop in, in the in the in the in the in the uh, time autocorrelation. Okay, so so what does it mean? It means that uh, uh, we are not sure uh, to 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 that things will be well defined when we try to to measure the effect of of this uh, uh, mean dissipation, and also it will mean that a given fluctuation that we observe. Uh, at, at the beginning of, of, uh, of uh, Lagrangian statistics might uh, influence the whole dispersion process. Okay, so here, I mean, I've shown two things. I mean, the dissipation and the entropy. So basically it's uh, more or less like the norm of, of, the, of the symmetric part and the norm of the anti-symmetric part of, of, the, of the gradient tensor. And, and, and you see that the two are, are going with a very similar power law of the order of minus one, maybe even a, a bit less steep for, for, for the, the, the entropy. And, uh, uh, and basically the, the uh, and both of them have, have, have a, a cutoff uh, at, at, at scales which are larger than, than the, the large scale of, of the flow. So now uh, I want to focus on turbulent pair dispersion. So, so basically turbulent pair dispersion is what's happening when you look at the evolution between the separation of the separation between two tracers as a function of time by conditioning on the initial separation. And typically, so there is a zoo of regime, which is shown on, on, on this picture, depending on how you choose the initial separation and how you choose the time at which you look uh, at, at, at this, uh, at this uh, at the distance between uh, the tracers. So for instance, if you start uh, with initial separations, which are in, in, the, in the dissipative range, so uh, at the initial separations, which are less than the Kolmogorov scale eta, basically what you, what you expect is to, to, to see a, a, a part which will come from the, the chaotic separation of tracers, which is uh, what is called this exponential regime. And, and then when things, when, when, once you, are, you, you have uh, rich separations which are entering the, 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 the inertial range, then you will go to what I call the explosive separation, which is a Richardson diffusion, where the square of the separation is going like T cube. So, and, and, and then when time is becoming larger than, than, than the, the large distance over time, you will enter a diffusive regime where you're just uh, uh, looking at, at, at the effect of uh, independent uh, 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 realization of the flow. Now, if you start from initial separations which are inside the, the inertial range, so above the Komarov scale, but less than the large uh, scale of the flow, uh, basically this explosive separation is preceded by a ballistic regime during which two tracers will just separate ballistically before uh, uh, the, the, a time which is of the order of the turnover time associated to their initial separation. So you have all these zoo of things. And basically I will focus on, 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 on two regimes, uh, basically the, what's happening at very small uh, separations so in this exponential regime and what's happening in the explosive uh, Richardson regime. So uh, concerning the dissip dissipative range separations, uh, basically, uh, the, 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 so we are interested in, uh, in the limit where we take a separation between tracers, which is infinitesimal, in the sense that uh, it's much less than, than the dissipative, Kolmogorov dissipative scale. So that basically it relates to the tangent dynamics of, the, of associated to tracers. So we look at infinitesimal separations, which are evolving uh, basically according to this linear equation where the time derivative of separation is the gradient of the velocity field along a tracer times the, the separation attempt. So basically, uh, it's, in other terms, we, we are looking, so it's a linear system, so we can 
uh, write it uh, in this way, where we have the, the evolution matrix, uh, you know, if you want the, the green function uh, associated to the gradient or the time order exponential of the gradient. And, and so which allows us writing the separation at time t as a function of separation at time zero. And this uh, matrix J is nothing but the Jacobian matrix associated to the, to the Lagrangian flow. Okay. So uh, basically, usually one is looking at the singular values of, of this uh, Jacobian matrix, okay, which are defined by uh, diagonalizing the uh, J transpose time J. And, uh, and, and basically, this, so it's, uh, you have positive uh, uh, eigenvalues, which are used in order to define the so-called uh, stretching rates or finite time Lyapunov exponents, uh, which are uh, given by one over t uh, times the log of, of, this, uh, of these uh, eigenvalues. So uh, usually they are order we order them. So by uh, designating one by one, the, the largest and three, the smallest. And because of the flow incompressibility, they have to sum to zero, okay? And so now uh, uh, basically uh, by applying uh, Oscillated's multiplicative ergodic theorem, we know that the stretching rates have a finite uh, limit. So they tend to, uh, uh, deterministic values which are independent of the trajectory and uh, which, which, are, which are in principle independent of, which be, and become independent of time or so, which are called the Lyapunov exponents. So here what is shown is the behavior of, of, of the, the, the average uh, stretching rate as a function of time, okay, average over uh, uh, hundreds of thousands of trajectories. And, and what you see is that indeed, the stretching rate are stabilizing to finite values. Okay, so one, two, and three. And these finite values, I mean, are uh, numbers which are, which are uh, fractions of the inverse Kolmogorov of time. And the fact that, so how do we measure irreversibility in this, in this thing? We measure irreversibility just by the fact that the smallest uh, uh, Lyapunov exponent is different from minus the largest one, okay? And, and, and why? Because if you think about uh, this, this, uh, the, 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 the eigenvalues of this uh, uh, Jacobian matrix, I mean, the, the inverse of the Jacobian matrix is, is exactly uh, the, 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 the Jacobian associated to going from uh, uh, t to zero, so going uh, backward in time, and, and so the reverse, the time reverse dynamics uh, has uh, singular values which are exactly the inverse of, of, the, of the singular value that we have for the direct thing. So which means that if we were time reversible, uh, basically, uh, and as we order the, 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 the singular values, we will get that the, 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 the largest uh, eigenvalues of, of, of the reverse dynamics is minus the, the, the smallest eigenvalues of the, of the direct dynamics, okay? And, and so irreversibility, basically you can measure it by the fact that lambda three is different from minus lambda one. And by the fact, uh, so since the sum of the Lyapunov exponent has to be zero because of, of, the, of incompressibility, the fact that the second the intermediate uh, uh, Lyapunov exponent has a sign, I mean, it, it's not zero. Okay. And this is pretty clear from, from these figures. So you have uh, typically two uh, Lyapunov exponents which are positive. So the two largest Lyapunov exponents are positive and their sum is negative, of course. So which means that uh, basically it's a clear trace of, 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 uh, of time irreversibility. So this uh, time irreversibility actually is, is rooted in the fact that the gradients themselves are, are asymmetric. And, and, uh, and actually, so, so uh, the, the, uh, one can find the, the I mean, uh, recover the, 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 the asymmetry by measuring uh, the, the maximal uh, longitudinal gradients and compare it to the minimal longitudinal gradient. So, so if you want, I, I'm, I'm, so A is the, is the gradient matrix of, of, of the velocity field. And what, what I do is that I take the, the longitudinal part and I take the maximum value of the longitudinal part that they call A max, and I, I'm comparing it to the minimal 
things. So if things were, were uh, time reversible, I mean, A will be transformed to minus A and the max and the mean will be transformed one to minus the other. Okay. So here is what is shown is the probability distribution function of these A max and A mean, so on the minus A mean. So the max is the blue curve and the mean is the red curve. And what you see is that clearly uh, they have they have uh, they have different distributions. So which uh, which is uh, 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 a sign uh, somehow of the asymmetry of the longitudinal uh, the, of the distribution of the longitudinal uh, gradient, and the ratio between the average of, of these two quantity is of the order of the ratio of, of uh, between the the, the the, the largest and the smallest Lyapunov exponent. So which means that uh, since this ratio is different from one, this is a sign of, of a gain of irreversibility. Of, um, not one, minus one. So. Okay, so, so it seems that, that things are pretty simple uh, concerning Lyapunov exponents, that uh, it's sufficient to get uh, uh, this uh, irreversible, so, so uh, uh, if you want an uh, asymmetric or skewed distribution of, of, the, of, the, of the velocity gradients in order to, to get some, some, uh, some handle on the time asymmetry of the Lyapunov exponents. So now let me turn to the linked with dissipation. So now what I'm measuring here is are the stretching rates, but conditioned on, on, the, on the value of the local dissipation average along my trajectory. And, and then what I, what I will I'm measuring is the average of the intermediate stretching rate. So remember, this guy has to be zero if I, uh, if I am uh, time reversible, conditioned on this uh, uh, value of, of, the, of the time average uh, uh, dissipation. And here are the results as a function of time. So for different uh, uh, conditioning on, on, the, on the average, uh, dissipation, so it's increasing from uh, blue to, to brown here. And the, the full average is represented as gray. And what you see is that by increasing this conditioning, of course, you're, 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 uh, uh, so basically you're, you're selecting uh, events which are uh, more, more and more dissipative. And at the same time, you increase this, uh, this uh, asymmetry between, between uh, 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 direct time and reverse time. So basically, the, the, you're, you're moving away from zero. Okay. So the, the, the so the, so this is uh, I mean it, 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 something which seems trivial. But now, if you if you try to make to make uh, 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 some quantitative statements about the, the dependence of of this uh, uh, conditional average of the second uh, stretching rate. Uh, uh, basically, you, you could say that, that, that uh, uh, since you're, you're sampling uh, uh, a trajectory which is visiting a, a more intense region of the flow, uh, certainly you, you have to, so, to, 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 to non-dimensionalize the stretching rate in the proper way by introducing the, the local uh, 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 common time. So basically, this, this is a, a, a rate, so it's like an inverse time. So uh, it's an inverse time which is constructed from the gradient. Okay, so so basically you you, you can you can use the typical value of the gradient, which is one over this uh, this uh, this uh, uh, comma of time, but but this time evaluated with the conditioning on epsilon. Okay. And and so this is what is shown here. So it's this conditioning as a function of epsilon. And what you see is that you're not flat. I mean you're not going to a plateau which is your expected value at long time, but you're rather going to something which continue to depend on epsilon. So with a, a strange power, which is minus 0.12. So which means that here somehow it's a way to relate the, the, the conditioning you're doing on, 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 the, on, the, on, the, on the dissipation to a measure of the, 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 the asymmetry uh, of the fluctuations. So it's, it's not exactly, a, a, a fluctuation dissipation measurement, but it 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 it, uh, it has the same flavor as as a fluctuation dissipation, and 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 basically uh, the the why we have this exponent minus 
point waves, and, and, and you see the, 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 the scaling is pretty clear. And it's clear that we, we are not going to, to a plateau, that, that uh, there is some slope, even if it's a small value. Uh, certainly, this could be related to the, the fluid flow intermittency, but uh, up to now, I, I have not much uh, more to say about this specific value. And now, so now I, I, I have also done some measurements on, on the higher order uh, statistics of, of these. Uh, so I was talking up to now on the mean, uh, about the mean, about the Lyapunov exponent, but now uh, basically, uh, what about the fluctuations uh, along this, uh, I mean, around these means? So what we know is that uh, normally, if we have a sufficiently short correlated gradients, we expect the joint distribution of, of, of the, the three stretching rate to be described by uh, uh, a large deviation principle, where basically uh, their, their, their probability density, their joint probability density function is given, is relates to, to a, a, a convex rate function. Okay, and, and this is the typical way we, we, uh, we expect uh, large deviations to occur. So the, the rate function is positive, it's convex. It's, it has a minimum equal to zero, which is attained uh, at the mean value, lambda one, lambda two. So in, in other words, I mean, it's, it's uh, uh, so this large deviation, I mean, if you look at deviations which are close to, 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 to the, the, the value of the mean, so uh, uh, row one and row two of the order of the Lyapunov exponents, basically you can uh, make a Taylor expansion close to this minimum of this convex function. And if everything is smooth and well-defined, uh, this this, uh, this Taylor expansion is giving you a quadratic uh, uh, formula for 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 the, the rate function, and which is equivalent to the to the central limit theorem, okay, of for, for the for the the searching rates. So gamma being the 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 the, the, the covariance matrix of row one and row two. So here, what is shown on on, on this figure? So normally you, you expect, so the, the, the covariance matrix here of, of these things to, uh, uh, to, to behave as, as a, uh, so I'm sorry, it's not exactly the covariance matrix. I'm sorry, I did a mistake because there is this T here, okay? So it's actually TH, which is going like gamma, okay? And, 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 so, and so basically uh, the, 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 what is shown here is actually this, uh, this uh, th okay so the the, the actual uh, uh, covariance as a function of time and and basically what you expect if if you if you want things to go to h is that this gamma okay should go like one over t okay so this is the central limit theorem is to tell you that variances are going like one over square root of t and what you see here is that uh, apparently there is no regime in this as a function of time where uh, 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 behavior proportional to, to one over time can be observed. And this is not very surprising. I mean, this is a consequence, certainly, of the long range correlations that we are observing. So maybe if, if a, a, a behavior proportional to one over t uh, is expected, it should be only at very, very long times, uh, which are well above the, 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 the large, the large, uh, the large, uh, the large edit on over time where we were observing uh, time correlations of the gradients or of the, of the dissipation to go down uh, like an exponential. So in other terms, I mean, you can, you can also see uh, this, uh, this uh, problem uh, related to, to the, the central limit theorem uh, by measuring the, the, by estimating the, the rate function, uh, either the rate function associated to row one or the one uh, associated to row one and row two. So here, what, what I show is, is uh, uh, basically an estimate of, of, of the, the rate function as a function of row one for different times. And the, the, the central limit theorem would tell us normally that things are going to this parabola, which is shown in black here, which is the, the, the guy associated to a Gaussian distribution. And, and, and here, what you see is that clearly uh, you, you, have, you have some, 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 uh, some discrepancy to these things, so which means that certainly there is no central limit theorem for, for these trajectories, or not yet, or no central limit theorem at times much larger than Toyota, but much less still, much less or of the order of the large edit on the time. And, and here, so it's here, it's a bit more complicated because now it's 2D. So here it's a, 
an estimate of h of rho one rho two and of course of rho one rho two, uh, and and uh, and basically uh, the black lines here are, are what you would expect from the central limit theorem. So it's a Gaussian distribution uh, centered on this point, and what you see is that again you have a tilt, so like like, like you observe here, so and and uh, and uh, some asymmetry, uh, which which is developing. Uh, so it's it's not very visible, but uh, basically you have things which are a bit a bit more uh, elongated than than the, the contour lines of a Gaussian. If you look at the colors, but it's, so it's uh, pretty suggestive. So now, uh, and how many times? It's okay. So now we will turn quickly to to uh, to inertial rent separations. So, so uh, I will close. So now, now I am considering a different regime. So the regime where uh, my tracers are now uh, chosen with an initial separation, which is inside the inertial range. And basically, uh, uh, irreversibility is pretty well understood in the ballistic regime. Okay, so, so in the ballistic regime is the regime during which the velocity has not much changed if you look at a pair of tracers. So that basically, as it has not much changed, you can make a Taylor expansion in time of, of, of the separation at time t minus separation at time zero. And, and what you get is that you have a leading order term, uh, which is proportional to the second order structure function, the initial second order structure function time t square. And then you have the next leading order term, which is t cube, which is breaking the time symmetry. So this one is time symmetric. And, and the breaking of this time symmetry is clear because this quantity, which is the the, the the, the scalar product, I mean, the, 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 the variance, I mean, the, the, the correlation between uh, the difference in velocity and difference in acceleration is uh, uh, signed. It's, it's always negative and equal to minus two times the mean uh, dissipation. So, so because of, of, of the fact that this thing is signed and, and, uh, and does not change when you make t to minus t, basically this term is breaking the, the, the time reversibility of, of the dissipation. So you have breakage of time symmetry at, at short time in this basic regime. What's happening at longer time is much more complicated and basically and, and, uh, and understood only at, at the qualitative level. And so now uh, if you look at separation, so times which are much larger than this uh, the turnover time associated to the initial separation, what you get is that you're entering the so-called Richardson uh, explosive regime where the square separation is going like time to the power th three. Okay. And, and typically, so now uh, the asymmetry is, is, uh, is, uh, is not in subleading terms, but is in the leading uh, uh, behavior and is inside this uh, Richardson constant G. So if you measure it, uh, forward or backward in time, basically you observe two different, I'm sorry, it's plus plus, but it should be minus divided by plus. So you have a, a, a description, I mean, a difference between uh, a ratio between the, the, the two constants associated to plus and minus time, which is of the order of two. So this is what is shown on, on this figure. So here is so the, the square separation as a function of time. So it's a, for an initial separation, which is uh, uh, as far as I remember, which is of the order of 16 times the Comerger scale. And what you see is that uh, when you go far uh, in the, in, uh, so the T0 will be maybe somewhere here. So if you're further than T0, you, you observe this T cube regime, which is shown parallel to this line. And you have a, a difference in constants in these two regime with a factor two for the backward compared to the forward. So this uh, observation is, is uh, is uh, consistent with the fact that you expect uh, again a skewness, like, like like for the gradients, that you observe a skewness in the in the velocity increments this time, so not uh, derivatives of of the of the turbulent velocity field, and this is uh, this skewness is uh, is uh, is the one which is given by the Forfi flow, okay, and the, and it relates to to uh, to a finite uh, dissipation of of kinetic energy. But, but these considerations and the fact that the, 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 you observe a factor two in the constant uh, is still uh, understood only at a qualitative level. I mean, there is no way to relate the Forfi flow to uh, this factor two here, okay? except by constructing maybe some, uh, 
hand wavy models for, for, for the separation. So uh, uh, basically what, what, what I've tried to, to, to do is to again uh, look at what is the correlation between uh, uh, dissip strong dissipation and uh, this breakage of, of, of uh, time symmetry in this uh, dissipative regime. And for that, what, what I show here are, are statistics on the relative separation of tracers, so backward and forward in time, by conditioning to the fact that at the place where I, 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 uh, I fix the initial or final separation, depending if I'm going forward or backward, I, I, I'm conditioning also on, on the fact that I observe locally a, a given value of, of, the, of the kinetic energy dissipation. Okay. So, I mean, this is just to, to tell you the color code. So here I have my, my uh, almost uh, um, uh, log normal distribution. So I basically I'm taking the things uh, you see from uh, more than 10 times the average to less than one tenth of the, of the average. And the different colors are the different conditioning I'm doing. And, and, and these are the measurements for the forward and the backward separation. So again, the gray things are, 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 are the, 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 the full average and the different colors are different values of, of the conditioning on epsilon. So clearly, when observed again, that uh, stronger dispersion, so things where R square is large, are associated to the highest values of, of dissipation. So not very surprising. I mean, the stronger is the flow, the stronger is the dissipation, the stronger is the dispersion. And, 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 but clearly, the, the, the other thing which is, which is, uh, that I don't fully understand is that uh, it seems that the, the, the memory of, of this initial dissipation on which I'm, I mean, or final dissipation on which I'm conditioning is, is, is persisting for a pretty long time. See that, that, that for instance, the, the red or the blue, I mean, continue to be very different even if I, if I have exceeded the, the larger deep turnover time. And this is even more clear in the backward dispersion. So basically the conditioning is again uh, telling me that I will observe a uh, uh, difference in, in, in dispersion for very, very long time, larger than the larger deep turnover time. So uh, 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 another of the measurements is now that in order to, to, um, to, to character, characterize further the, the, the asymmetry between backward forward, what I've measured is the difference between the, the square uh, separation at minus time minus the square separation at time t. Okay. And again, uh, uh, condition on different value of, 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 the, of the, the, the dissipation at time zero. And, and what you see is again, so that the, the asymmetry, so the asymmetry uh, between, uh, so this is measuring the asymmetry. So if things were symmetric, I would get zero. So it's positive, which means that the minus t is faster than the t, okay? And the, this asymmetry is increasing again as a function of epsilon. Remember, blue is low value of, of dissipation, red is large value. And, and so, and, 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 uh, and surprisingly, uh, uh, basically, it seems that now I'm, I'm, I'm uh, uh, I, I, I'm getting rid somehow of, of uh, what I had before, which, so because before, you see, I, I was polluted somehow by what's happening at, at the smallest uh, times, okay? But now it seems that I have a, a behavior which is extending up to the largest times. You see that there is no thing special happening at Toel. So that's the first, the first thing. And the second thing, it, it seems that uh, this asymmetry is uh, is uh, is uh, behaving like a power law, okay, as a function of time, but this time with a power which depends on epsilon. Okay, so this this thing is going like a power law with a given slope, and this one uh, power law with another slope. And if I measure this exponent, so it's uh, this one that they call alpha, which depends on epsilon, as a function of epsilon, this is what I get. So three would be. Uh, what, what I, I, I would expect for the mean, yes. And, and what you see is that uh, basically it's, it's something which is deviating from three, okay? So, so it's, a, and which, it, which is a steeper 
uh, at, at small values of epsilon and less steep at, at the larger value and which seems not to depend on the, on the scale at which I'm conditioning initially. Okay, so uh, just uh, time to summarize. So, so basically, uh, this is something which seems to me in the realm of turbulence research and from what I, I've, uh, I've learned after, after some years in, in turbulence, I mean, there are different effects when one is trying to, to look at a problem in turbulence. And, and the, the first effect is the, what I call the Pandora box effect. So it means that you start to measure a new thing and, and, and you have a, a, a population of monsters which are, which, are, which, are, which are arriving. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and basically it, means, it seems that there are uh, very intricate relations between dissipation and Lagrangian time irreversibility, but which all looks like monsters. I mean, it's not like, uh, uh, something very clear, very beautiful that 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 one can can uh, can understand, and it seems that it could be that the nature of dispersion itself is is affected by the local fluctuations, because uh, uh, as you as you see, uh, so we have this trouble of of uh, of uh, loss of ergodicity somehow, uh, which is which seems to be only recovered in average. So if we start to condition on dissipation, it seems as if uh, we, we, we were uh, remembering uh, this conditioning all or during all the, the, the life of, of, uh, of, uh, of the tracers. So the second effect is this uh, power law effect. So I mean, uh, uh, there are so many power laws in turbulence and, and, uh, and there are several scalings which are, which are, which are arising. And, uh, and, uh, and basically the, at the moment, I mean, it's unclear whether uh, uh, usual arguments uh, used in turbulence based on uh, on a multifractal approximation will be able to describe these exponents, or if these exponents are stemming from from uh, from uh, subleading terms, because uh, since we are looking at differences between backward forward, for instance, uh, it may be that there are constellations that 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 uh, that relates to subleading, uh, so that which uh, pop out the subleading terms instead of of being able to be described by uh, by uh, by uh, uh, adapted the multifractal scaling arguments. And then uh, the last effect is the still a lot to, a lot to do. So of course, I mean, uh, I, I'm still very far from being able to interpret my observations in terms of uh, uh, conditions provided to mathematicians on the physical admissibility. So this is, uh, uh, this was the goal and I'm still far from the goal. Okay, so thank you and uh, I wanted to, to take this opportunity to, uh, to uh, wish a happy birthday to Yoriel, so who is turning 80 now. And, uh, and uh, it's a real pleasure to continue uh, interacting with you. Okay, thanks. <laughs>